Here we're going to take a look at how we can uh, find probability uh, using our knowledge of fractions and especially fractions multiplication. Um, to start off, let's start by setting another example here. So we're going to look at finding uh, what is the probability of getting green on the spinner and a tail with a coin. Uh, so we know how to do this using a probability table. So that's what I'm going to set up first. So I'm going to set up my coins over here and I know that I can get a heads or a tails. And then I'm going to set up my spinner. I know that I can get a green, a blue, or a yellow. And I'll just straighten out my table here a little bit. If I start to look at my results, um, I can get a head or a green. I can get a tail or a green. Get a head or a blue, a tail or a blue, a head with a yellow, and a tail with a yellow. Um, so just looking at this, I can figure out really quickly just exactly my probability of getting a, a green and a tails. And I can see that right here, green tails. And I know I've got, it's a one and it's over a six here because I got six possible outcomes. But the other way we can do this, and, and we'll start with a very basic example, is by looking at the probability of each event happening on its own. So if I take a look at the probability of getting a green, that is this column here. I know that there is three options that I can get out of a spinner, a three-sided spinner with these colors. And I know that the probability of getting a green is one third. All right. And then I can look at my coins. What's the probability of me getting a, a tail? And I know if I get a tail, there's only two possible outcomes, a heads or a tail. The tail is going to be one half of the options. Now, the way that I can use this is I can use my knowledge from fraction up multiplication here. And I can um, do my probability of getting my first outcome, which is green. I can go one third. I can multiply that by the probability of my second outcome, which is getting a tail, which is a half. And I will also I will end up getting one sixth because I know my top times my tops, and my bottom times my bottoms give me one sixth. So the probability of getting a green on the spinner and a tail with a coin is one sixth. Now we can kind of take this a little bit further and we can see where we can go with this. Um, you, you're going to roll a six-sided dice, or die, sorry, and spin a spinner with five sections on it. What is the likelihood of rolling a six and then spinning a red? So I use the word likelihood here because uh, that's just synonymous or means the exact same thing as probability when we see it in a question. So I want to take a look at what is the probability of rolling a six. So rolling a six. I know the probability of rolling a 6 is just going to be 1 out of 6 because there's 6 possible outcomes. One of those outcomes is a 6. Okay. Um, spinning red. So spinning red. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 options. Um, one of them is red, so I know I have 1 out of 5 options gives me um, the probability of spinning a red. Now, just like we saw in the previous uh, section here, to find the probability of doing both of these, I can just multiply these together. So I can go my probability of rolling a 6, which is 1 6, times the probability of spinning a red, which is 1 5th. can multiply these guys together. Uh, 1 times 1 is going to give me a 1 over a 6 times a 5, which gives me a 30. So my probability here is 1 out of 30, or we can write that as 0 0.03 repeating, or we can write that as 3.3 repeating percent. Now we take this a little bit further. We can look at um, events with three or more. You could even do up to 100. You could do as many as you want events, um, as long as they are independent events, events that don't uh, matter to each other. So we're going to look at this example. We're going to find the probability of rolling an even number on a six-sided die, drawing any card that is a heart from a full deck of cards, and then flipping a heads with a coin. So I'm going to start by finding the, the probability of each individually. So I know I can roll an even number. So that's a 2, a 4, or a 6. Um, that's 3 out of the possible 6 outcomes when we roll a dice. And I'm going to simplify that. I'm going to put that down into um, lowest terms, which would just be a 1 out of, one of a, uh, sorry, 1 over 2. Now I'm going to look at uh, pulling a heart from a full deck of cards. I know a full deck of cards has 52 cards in it. And um, I know that uh, a quarter of those cards are going to be hearts, and that turns out to be 13 cards. Um, and if we reduce this into lowest terms, we can put this as 1 over 4. 
And I know from um, before that flipping a heads with a coin, there's only two options. One of them is a head. That gives us a one over a two. Now, to find the probability of uh, rolling an even number, a heart, and a heads, I can take all these values and multiply them together. So I can go one half times one quarter times one half. And that's going to give me, just like with all of our uh, fraction multiplication, Multiplication, I'm going to multiply my numerators, which is 1 times 1 times 1, gives me a 1 on top, over a 2 times 4 times 2, which is a 16 on the bottom. And I can turn this into both a decimal and a percent. So 1 divided by 16 is going to give me 0 0.0625. And in percentage form, that is 6.25%. So in this exact situation, you have a 6.25% probability or likelihood of rolling an even on the dice, pulling a heart out of the deck, and then flipping a heads with the coins.